I call Simon O'Connor. I'm exhausted listening to that. I, the old stump speech from Labor. The old stump. And yes, there's the word arrogance. That's the word they just keep using, that, that vainglorious hope, if they use the word arrogance, tired, that that'll, that'll fall onto the national government. But the strange thing is, as I go through my electorate, wonderful place of Tamaki, you know what? They actually don't worry about our arrogance or tiredness of uh, the National Party because they see us progressing positively. What I find most striking, though, what I find most striking is they don't even talk about the Labour Party. The Labour Party is completely, totally irrelevant. Not up to scratch, not up to standard, wouldn't be accredited, hasn't been accredited since 2008, and God help us if they're accredited in 2017. Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, the Standards and Accreditation Bill. I was going to say early on that I actually thought the speeches were up to a relatively good standard. It's been falling away a little bit there. Um, there's been a lot of talk around trade. And we've fallen back, and uh, I think Andrew Little was talking about it last week, the importance of trade and how New Zealand must diversify and reach out into the markets and we're not doing enough. There's a crisis that the sky is falling in. Well, it's interesting that they've gone back to logs I see that the Labour Party has gone back to logs as the great way to save this economy, that somehow we're just going to add value to logs and you know, build all sorts of bits and bobs, which the world, strangely enough, doesn't seem to want to buy off us at the moment. But that's completely irrelevant. We'll just continue on theories. And we've heard theories too tonight around uh, standards and accreditations. The last speaker was really, really keen on talking about electrical jacks, and then for some reason switched to phone jacks then switch back to electrical jacks. So when it comes to standards, the Labour Party seems to be really concerned about jacks. And then I thought, well, maybe that just fits into their previous policies where they're concerned about the standards of light bulbs, the standards of shower heads. And you're going, are these really the things that matter? And they're not. What matters at this, this government is progressing legislation, is progressing legislation uh, through the Commerce Committee, which is going to help strengthen the way that we engage. What we can see is actually a Commerce Committee, I believe, has worked jolly hard on this. And I know other speakers have acknowledged the Chair, Melissa Lee, uh, and the general consensus that has occurred in the committee, uh, often being displayed these days on Twitter on a Thursday morning with a whole lot of Epicurean uh, delights. I'm not sure who's on this week, but it's actually a very cooperative working committee. But one of the elements that's come up tonight is this question of perception, and particularly that the committee in this Thank side you. of the House has not listened uh, to petitioners. And I just want to put pay to that. Uh, 21 people uh, came before our committee and submitted. And I think uh, all people in the House, even the other side have acknowledged, they generally were experts in their field. Um, all of us listened, actually, which is a quite an important distinction. We listened. We, and then what we did is what most humans being do, is we engage our minds and we discuss between ourselves. We read the departmental reports. We go away and engage with people in our communities, in our electorates, um, and have those conversations. And the strange thing about democracy is that people are allowed to have different opinions. You know, in fact, the Honourable Judith Collins touched on it very briefly when she said that actually the whole point of democracy at times is to have a difference of opinion. We don't come into this house for the sake of just agreeing with each other. That in itself is anti-democratic. And what we found in this process is that we didn't fully agree. But the fundamental points where the disagreements are happening, I don't believe are actually real uh, from the opposition's side. The first is around conflicts of interest. This was discussed quite a bit, that all of a sudden, uh, the people on this, uh, these panels, these working groups, somehow are going to be conflicted. Um, the strange thing is, if you wish to have people setting standards, working to accreditations, you want them to have a certain degree of knowledge uh, and understanding. And the committee worked, I think, jolly hard on this to say, look, we've got to set the... Yes, that's right, unless you're from the union, that raises a whole lot of other questions. But what we wanted is people with experience. We want them to declare that. And I don't have the exact wording in front of me, uh, but we have actually made changes in the select committee to make sure that that bar is not set too high nor too low. We don't want... Well, you can't have... Uh, someone on a standards working panel who doesn't know about the subject. So 
instantly you're going to have a bill or an electrician, uh, a radiographer, whatever, sitting on one of these working groups. Of course they're going to have a conflict of interest. It's their area of expertise. So we've tried to put a, a measurement, if you will, in there uh, that allows some conflicts, obviously, to be acknowledged as we would expect, uh, but not too large. The other has been the whole question that we would dare to put uh, this uh, organisation under the auspices of MB, the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment. A great scandal, great scandal we're hearing from the other side. Uh, I think the first point for the House, and obviously anyone listening at home and those in the industry, um, this is an indis um, independent statutory body. Okay? What we are developing here through legislation is an independent statutory body. And for the edification of uh, the other side, the edification of the other side, I'm all for sesquipedalianism, increasing the standards of language. We have a number of independent statutory bodies, and it's strange tonight we haven't heard the opposition demanding that these be closed down. In fact, if you look at the uh, Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment, Mr Speaker, there are 35 statutory bodies under their auspices. Not all, I would note, are independent, but those that are are the likes of the remur remuneration rather, authority. Yeah, <laughs> yeah getting tongue-tied here. Uh, the remuneration authority, the like of the banking ombudsman scheme, uh, the copyright tribunal, and of course the employment relations authority. These are uh, exactly, if you're following the logic or lack of the other side, that these are no longer independent because they're under the auspices of a particular ministry. It doesn't make any sense. If you're going to be consistent, the second side, the second side, and it's what Judith Collins was noting is that in this structure a minister is held accountable, a very particular uh, person. And it could be an encouragement to the opposition after uh, all these years to actually ask some questions which really matter to a minister and which matter uh, to the people. The last point I'd make around that is, is around the word synergies. Ultimately, working within a ministry such as the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment allows for synergies that actually ideas are being shared. You can be independent, you can act in that space. Collaboration. collaboration. Exactly. Absolutely. Could you believe it? Positive collaboration. Something actually that this government remains very, uh, very keen on. Um, another element I want to uh, touch on is around uh, copyright. A number of submitters uh, raised this in different ways, and a couple of constituents did uh, with me as well. It's in clause 42 of the bill. And one particular submitter during the select committee was basically concerned about their copyright if it was put into legislation. The idea being, if they have an idea, it's articulated in legislation, that they would lose their uh, copyright. It's very important uh, in the notion of New Zealand's laws that if something is formally put into legislation, that it comes under the Crown's copyright. And if something's under the Crown's copyright, then it must be available uh, to all uh, for free and to be used. There's no point in having laws if they're not uh, transparent and accessible. So within Clause 42, and we took a bit of time uh, discussing this as a committee, we've made the distinction uh, between those items which are referenced in the law those will maintain a third-party copyright. So if you are the person who has articulated the standard and ideas, you have a copyright uh, to that. If it is only referenced uh, in the legislation, you maintain the copyright. If, however, the standard is fully incorporated into the body of the legislation, and I can see my colleague here, Todd Barclay, from Clutha Southland, is absolutely hanging on every word about this distinction. Um, absolutely. I mean, you know, this is what... This is what the House is about. But if the copyright is actually, again, if it's fully engaged in the legislation, the Crown copyright holds, again, so it's accessible. So I think we've come to a, a worthwhile balance there, Mr Speaker. Look, ultimately, this is just one bill in a whole uh, suite of bills that this government is progressing. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we heard a lot from the former Speaker um, around the whole business growth agenda. It's an, a, a fantastic agenda. It is working. It is bringing about results. And this bill, in the name of the Honourable Paul Goldsmith, uh, the Minister of Commerce, is just one part of that, and I commend it to the House.